when was the moment for you? Because I'm sure you were probably thinking for a, a long time, like, I should probably lose some weight, right? I should sure. probably start eating healthier. When was the moment that was the make or break moment for you that you said, enough is enough or never again, or I got to start this journey the real way, like I'm going all in. When was that moment? There was a, a period in 2002. I, I, I had fallen in love with this girl when I was 16 and we were really, really good friends. She says we were best friends and she had zero interest in me uh, romantically. You were in the friend zone. I was in the friend zone. Yeah. Fine. Um, 16 years old. 16 years old. How, how, what was your weight like then? I was heavy, but I wasn't quite like a, as heavy like a 200, as 200, 250, 300. You know, I wasn't, even then, it's like I wasn't getting on scales often. Right. I certainly wasn't 500 pounds. I actually have a picture of us um, from when we were 16 and we were hanging out. And I'm a heavy guy, but I'm not morbidly obese. Yeah. Um, we became romantic in 2002 and. And it, there was just a, a moment where I was like, oh, if I'm gonna make this work, if, if this really has a shot at longevity, I gotta change because she likes to do stuff like take a hike and right. spend the day at the beach and go to museums. And I can't do that, you know? So that was kind of it. It was like, how, I, want, I wanna have this relationship with her, so I must change. It was a, a bizarre, kind of counterintuitive conversation that I had with her too, because having it, I was scared, like if I have this conversation, she'll know how, that I'm overweight, like that I'm obese. As, as if <laughs> she didn't know. As <laughs> if she didn't know. It was like this thing, if I show her that this is something I wanna change, not just like this masculine thing of like I'm showing weakness, it wasn't that, it was this is the hardest this is this thing is so unconfrontable. I never think about it. I, I I push it away. It's it's almost become something subconscious. So if I bring it to the forefront and I say let's address this, that's a very uh, scary <clears throat> and narrow path to walk because failure. I I, I figure life is failure at mm. that point. Mm. You know. Yeah. So that was two thousand two. Is did you start going all in? Was it? dabbling a little bit and kind of lost weight went back off the wagon what was that like for the next 18 years till now i went all in and i'm a, I'm a sober guy too so i went all in in a very uh in a similar fashion to uh, achieving sobriety which was admit that i'm powerless and turn my problem over to somebody else and go like I am incapable of figuring this out right now. Uh -huh. I'm gonna do exactly what you say until we get to the point that I can take over. Mm. And she was like, great, here's what you're gonna do. I've uh, went and found a guy who has a liquid diet. You can do it for up to two months. Why don't you do that? You don't have to do it for two months. You can do it for one month. You can do it for two. Let's see how this goes. And I crushed that. Two months liquid diet. 80 pounds. Wow. Two months. This is not like drinking Cokes all day liquid diet. This no. is no sugar liquid diet. This is like, I mean, the calories were so low. It was like three weird protein shakes with some green powder uh -huh. and a ton of supplements that were, I think, mostly fiber and some mm. vitamins and as much water as I could drink. And that's it. 80 pounds, two months. 80 pounds. But that's still in the 400 zone. Yeah, but, but you must I will say it. this. Of all the weight I've gained and lost, I never dipped back into those 80 pounds. Wow. Never once. So wow. that, that I, it was such a prize that I've never gotten close to like back into that zone. And I followed that up with, um, I don't even know what the diet's called. It might have been like a blood type mm -hmm. diet or something. And it was kind of on that where I realized like, well, I'm gonna have to try different diets. And I tried a, basically every diet yeah. that exists. What worked the best for you? The easiest thing was keto. Yeah. Because it, I just didn't have to think about anything. You can eat lots of meat, you just eliminate certain things and eat as kind of as much as you want of other stuff, right? Yeah, and, I th and that worked to a degree as I had less and less weight to lose I found that I had to like 
mess around with what I was yeah. eating. Because, yeah. you know, when I first started, it was like, you can eat bacon and Swiss cheese all day long. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. like, okay, well, that's easy. And I, I would, and I'd lose weight, and I'd be like, this is a magical diet. And I'm putting mayonnaise on everything, yeah. and I'm losing weight. How is this possible? Um, you know, my little salad would have four cups of salad dressing on it. And, you know, no sugar, but, like, a ton of fat. Yeah. Um, and that did work. And I was able to do it, and it was super easy for traveling. You just rip the bread off stuff and eat steaks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's actually, I think, uh, designed to be easy to get around the world and eat this way. Um, once I got really close to, there were, there were two periods. There was a period in 2012 where I was super into cycling, and I got really lean, much smaller than like I am. 190 or something or one I was uh, just about 200 wow. but that's tiny for me and um you know you think about 200 that's still you're a big dude but that was really really small for me and I just no noticed that if I was eating only fat I was suffering on the bicycle like I wasn't as efficient on the bicycle mm -hmm. so some sugars gels carbs yeah some stuff. carbs entered my diet and like I would fly up hills, you know, um, which was really cool. Then I had a bad accident. Um, my wife told me that I wasn't ever going to make a living riding a bike. You know, I thought we were rich and that I could retire and just ride my bike at like 35 years mm -hmm. old forever. Uh, that was not the case. Uh, she said I had to go work again. So I went back to acting and the bike kind of fell away and I started doing like CrossFit and, mm -hmm. and uh, rowing machines mm -hmm. i was i could crush a full marathon on a rowing machine no wow. problem um and then at some point i was kind of having trouble finding work and kept hearing like well you're not the big guy the heavy lovable guy anymore so there was a point where i was like okay i'm just gonna eat and lift weights and see what happens and i ate whatever i wanted for about a year and lifted weights and got pretty near 400 pounds again wow yeah. So you gained 200 pounds within a year. Yeah. Close. Well, no, it was really from like 2000, three years. It was three wow. years. Yeah. 2013 now, how to long were you? How long did you pause from acting? 2010. And pause is not quite the right word. I did a few pilots that didn't get picked up. Sure. Um, but I was putting no effort into it. It was like if they called me and said, please come do our pilot, I would do it. Right. But you're I was not wasn't. going on auditions. You're no, not. No. I was really just riding my bike. When you've been in, how many movies you've been in and TV shows? I've never counted. I actually have no 50 idea. 50 plus, you think? Yeah. At least, right? Yeah. When you've been in that many movies or shows, do you have to audition anymore? Yeah, sure. You still have to audition? Yeah, definitely. Really? Even if they've seen all your work, they know what you can do. Yeah, I mean, it's, sometimes it's just a matter of th uh, the director wanting to see if you're exactly what he wants for this specific project, or now that I'm physically different, what is that going to look mm -hmm. like, you know? But yeah, yeah, I still have to audition. What was the, when you look back, what do you think the, the thing is that drew you to eating as a, as a, a bad habit? or an addiction or a mind-numbing process that was a part of your life for so long? Was there a number of events? Was there moments? Was there something that connected you to that? I've tried to do like self-psychoanalysis on this and I get to a, a point where I'm five years old, I go to visit my grandparents in Vermont and their reaction to me. And if I look at a picture of myself as at five years old today, I see just like a normal, healthy kid with maybe some chubby cheeks, right? Mm -hmm. Their reaction to me was like, oh my God, what are your parents doing to you? Y you have gone to crap, right? This is out of hand. We need to get this under control. And my favorite food was lasagna, which my grandpa mm, would always so make good. me. Yeah, and he had it cooking. As I arrived, I could smell mm. it. And I'm there visiting them for the first time without my mom or dad in Vermont, like super excited. Their reaction is this. And then they basically were like, we're not, you can't have a second helping of lasagna. So in that day, 
was the first time that I snuck food and it was clearing the table and eating food off their plates. At the same time, like clearing it and like... Yeah, just stuffing in a few bites because I was not allowed to like... I reached for a second helping and got my hand patted. Like, no. At five. Yeah, that's off limits. You, you eat what we tell you to do. And then the next day they weighed me first thing in the morning, which what? I had never been on a scale before and, I, and I'm being weighed. And then it was like, okay, we're going on a on a on a one mile walk that is for your benefit and this did a number of things it developed the sneaking food habit that developed the habit of wanting to eat privately and and the idea that people mm. witnessing me eating was not good and it also created a a weird barrier to me just naturally wanting to be outside and active because at 5 I was very active running around but when it was enforced when it was this point of like a punishment almost yeah this is we're not consulting how willing you are to do this we're not saying is there something you'd like to do outside we're saying you must go march on this it was like a mile to their mailbox and, and a mile back and like this is not for fun this is for because you have gotten so overweight that really pushed the idea of physical activity mm. into another punishment type thing where right. I just didn't want to do it anymore. So it was kind of this wild confluence of um, n new mental structures that I built where it was like, well, I'm going to sneak food now and I'm going to not do activities. How insecure were you about your weight when you got older and started recognize it or seeing maybe someone make fun of you or realizing like, oh, I can't go on a hike with my, my girlfriend or my friends and do these certain activities. Did you feel insecure about it ever or was it more of just this is who you are? I definitely felt insecure about it. I also got into a lot of fights as a kid and, and was like, you know, there were a few times in elementary school where like some preschooler would say like, wow, look how fat he is. And that um, obviously wasn't going to fight a little preschooler. And, and you come to learn like, well, avoid little kids at all costs because they just say they see something and they just talk about it. And I didn't, I, that w made me terribly uncomfortable. But if like another 10 year old said something like that to me, we would just have a fight. And mm -hmm. then people would know like, oh, he's got He's like not a nice guy in that circumstance. Yeah. We're not going to say that to him, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So how did you get into acting and being such a successful actor while also having this kind of insecurity or knew that you stood out in a different way than most of the other actors in Hollywood? There was like, a, I, in school, there were, I, I didn't really like school either. I didn't, I, I, I grew to really dislike anything done from a point of authoritarianism. Yeah. I, yeah. I just was not for me. So if it's like you're going on a diet or you have to do sports or you have to study, I was not into it. Um, which is really bizarre because now I love nothing more than a diet I find for myself and studying something I'm interested in and finding a sport to be interested. Like I can become obsessive about these yeah. things and do them 110% if it's my own determination. But from a point of authority, it just didn't fly. Um, and I noticed a, a couple of things. I was never like a class clown, but we had an actor in my school mm. and so much more attention was paid to the fact that he was an actor than any of his physical attributes, any of his other accomplishments in school, it, it was like this, this distraction, this like, here's who this person is, but like, here's this weird identity that actually has nothing to do with him, that we're all gonna focus on that. And, and there was something kind of magical about that, oh. like, I can't like kill people with jokes, that's just not what I do. But what if I had that too? What You're not if super I had, sexy and attractive. I'm with not going to do pack. any. Yeah. yeah. But I could create this other identity that would distract people from how fat I am and, and talking about that or poking fun at me or even wanting to talk to me about it. Because like I'll just hmm. show them this. What if I do this? So there was, and it got you out of school. Because this dude would leave school for weeks at a time wow. and go hang out on sets and like, 
guess what's on a set? Craft services on a set. And, Free food all day. And you got a trailer. Like, you can fill your pockets with food right. and go back to your trailer and eat it. Like, it's this wonderful place. It was like... Unlimited food supply. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> and then there was also, like, always going to be, like, some grip who had a prescription to Percocet mm. that you could, like give a wink yeah, to and you know like your my and by the way it always started legitimately like my feet hurt my ankles and my knees hurt like these are real things hey, I, you're on set 18 hours a day you're standing, doing this over and over. like none of it is just um irrational it's all irrational but it's also very mm -hmm. easily easily rationalized if you're looking for more greatness in your life make sure to check out this video right here and also check out our free pdf the three secrets to unlock the power of your mind to help you change your life download it right here are really important and the food that you're going to find micronutrients foods that you're going to find them in are whole foods you're going to find them in plants you're going to find them in meats